get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, This episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran, who Tom also knows. Rise25's mission is to connect business owners to their ideal peers, customers, and referral partners. Uh, We do this in three ways. One, we completely run and launch your own podcast, distributed across 11 different channels, dedicated blog posts, put it on social media. So you just show up and talk and we do everything else. Uh, Two, we do live in-person VIP days and receptions with top entrepreneurs all over the country. So check that out. And three, we do a done-for-you lead generation service where we manage a consistent outreach to your ideal clients and referral sources. This is not paid traffic, by the way. Uh, Since it requires a lot of humans to do the work, we have limited bandwidth and we only want to work with the right company. So if it's interesting to you, go to rise25.com and contact us. I'm especially excited for today's guest. Uh, We email every day, multiple times a day. Today we have Tom Ross and he is CEO and founder of Design Cuts. Uh, He's built an amazing company. He's built an audience of 400,000 designers and growing, grew the business to multiple seven figures and growing with more than 16 full-time staff. He's also one of the hosts of the Design, the Honest Designers Show, which if you search it, it is, and Tom, you may not know this, I don't know. Um, I did many searches for you, but it shows up. There's multiple lists of some of the top, most popular shows in the design community, and it's frequently in this one, two, or three slot if there's like top 10 design shows and all across the web on all these different lists. So check it out. And he's also the host of the Honest Entrepreneur Show where he gives a candid look as life as an entrepreneur. Tom, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Hell of an intro. What's been some popular use cases for the designs? Like you mentioned people selling on Etsy or have people like created a t-shirt company out of something on this. What have been some of the favorite like entrepreneurial stories that have come out of design cuts? Ooh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think what I'm legally allowed to share. Okay. So um, <laughs> I, I won't name the company name, but I would say a very, very big publishing house um basically kitted out their massive design team i think it was like 400 designers or something um with some of our products so many of the Mm. biggest uh book covers in the world Mm. have been done using our resources and i see it all the time man like i'll be out for dinner with my girlfriend probably at least 50 percent of the time the font on the menu is one that we've sold Mm like it is that's so cool. prevalent like it's so nerdy right no one but designers appreciates that stuff yeah but you see it everywhere and when you, like some of these we we created products in house when you see a product that you've worked on in a shop window and you're like that's damn cool. that's crazy the yeah. fact that you would even notice it out of all the designs you guys produce is actually pretty pretty remarkable uh, after five years you wouldn't believe the depths to my geekiness yeah like i will see like a letter in a shop window in new york and i'll be like i instantly know the supplier's first name and the name of their kids looking at it it's just like amazing it's soaked into my head now (laughs) yeah so i guess anyone who publishes book covers or illustrators or anyone in the design community i guess is a fit for this they can use it but companies who do that as you know what they do is is always good for that as well um what's you know you talk about this on the podcast um you know the honest designers podcast there's the good and the bad about being a designer in general right yeah what's the bad i mean i could see the good Uh, you're working from home probably you can make your own schedule what's mm -hmm. what some things say is is the hard hard stuff there's a ton and designers i think they're some of the most wonderful people the design community at large is awesome but man if you start posting memes like sharing client headaches that stuff takes off like there's a lot of crap that d- designers um have to deal with and we talk about a lot of that on the honest designer show podcast um for example we recently did a halloween episode sharing our design horror stories 
and I was doing this ridiculous voice for half of it, being like spooky, and it was just super stupid. But um, yeah, you're, you're kind of like the bottom feeders. It feels like at times. Hmm. I, I, Why? I worked as a designer, by the way, for the record for yeah. like ten years before I started doing you know more company stuff, and you will get clients micromanaging, breathing down your neck. You feel like a performing monkey where it's like they just tell you every pixel of what they want and they're practically just telling you where to move the mouse, but they can't use Photoshop themselves. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that. I think like any creative, and I would map this to many entrepreneurs as well, it comes with huge amounts of anxiety, imposter syndrome, things like that because you've got the double whammy of like, I don't know if my skills are good enough and my work's good enough, mm. but also I'm many of them are trying to do this to make a living. They might be freelance designers. So it's like, I also don't know if I'm good enough and if I'm going to make it and support my family or, or pay my mortgage. So mm. um, <clears throat> a lot of pressure. Yeah. And it, it's, um, I believe the same is very much true for entrepreneurs, but there are many similarities with entrepreneurs and designers. Mental health tends to statistically be higher, for example, um, which is completely understandable. Uh, and I think it's a combination of the job, uh, invoking that, but also the natural disposition, uh, designers, for example, a lot of your ego gets tied into your work. So if a client doesn't like what you do, then it really, really it hits hard. Take it personally. Yeah, exactly. So there's a ton of stuff really that's negative. But on the upside, when you really get down to it, it's like you're like the kid at school who sits and draws. Like you get paid to do that, and that's the coolest thing in the world. So when you strip away all the bullshit around it, like it's a pretty cool job. Yeah. Um, what works to spread the word about what you guys do? You know, I noticed when I go to these, it says pin it. Is Pinterest, do people spread this stuff on Pinterest a lot? Yeah, they do. Pinterest is really visual. I think if um, if you're not in the d design world, you might not use it that much unless like you're renovating your home or getting married or saving recipes or something of that nature. It seems to be for kind of pockets of certain industries and interests, but it's definitely big in the design world. There's some kind of power players on there. Uh, who tend to enjoy sharing our stuff as well as a, a lot of the wider community at large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was talking to – it just shocked me. I was talking to Jason Miles of Pixie Fair. I, I said, you guys need to talk. And he – when I was talking to him, he said, you know, there's like six sites that get the most traffic or referral traffic or whatever he was saying. And he's like listed Pinterest. And I'm like, wow, that is like a huge – you know, no one's talking about that. No one's talking about yeah. Pinterest. Yeah, because it's, it's more niche. I'm not sure it's going to work for everyone. Yeah. And there's more niche than that. I mean, you got like Dribble, Behance, some of these designer-specific social networks as well. So mm -hmm. it depends how niche you want to go. Yeah. Um, Tom, I always ask because it's Inspired Insider, one, what's been a low moment and how you push through it? And obviously, we talked a little bit about uh, one of those. And then two, what's been a proud moment? Um you know, that you're, you come out the other side, um, you know, from the, the low moment, it sounds like it was that time, obviously when you were super sick and yeah. And I, I touched a little bit on mental health with that being candid with you at one point, I thought I was never going to get better. Hmm. So I thought I was going to live like an 80 year old man for the rest of my life. And I'm like in my late twenties at this point. So I'd be in my kitchen at work making tea and bursting into tears at the sheer frustration of holy shit i've ruined my life so yeah that's you thought that's it was probably, gonna be permanent yeah seriously because it just wasn't getting better so that's definitely a low moment why do you think that because the were they just not diagnosing it properly <laughs> um because i kept going back to the doctor and he was saying it will get better it will get better and i'm like but it's not i'm still mm. super sick and they couldn't really do anything more was this after the surgery or before yeah, yeah. This would be like it was a year after. after the yeah, yeah. Like six months, twelve months after wow. the surgery, I'm still, I'm still like a wreck. Jeez. So yeah. you're like, you lost, you started to lose hope. Yeah. Big time. Thank God it got better. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I try and hold. Like as humans, we're really, really good at letting go of gratitude, and it's really annoying. Because I remember when I first started feeling like my old self, I was like skipping down the street, rainbows and unicorns, being like. 
this is the greatest. I'll never take my health for granted ever again. And then a few months later, you're like, man, I'm kind of hungover today. And like, man, I can't be bothered to go to the gym. And you're just a normal person again. Right. But I was elated mm. for a long while with the smallest thing. I'd be like, I wake up and my stomach doesn't hurt. I can, right. I can swallow this food and, and it's not uncomfortable. Like the smallest day-to-day stuff I loved. Mm. So what do you do now? Because you realize that at some point, right? Like, oh, I can go to the gym. Well, I can go to the gym. Like maybe <laughs> yeah. like six months ago you couldn't. So what do you do to remind yourself of those or, or just, just come to you automatically when you find yourself – you know, just taking for granted your normal health. I think I'm just overall happier and more content. But again, being very truthful with you, that's one of the biggest things I'm trying to work on right now mm. is actually just having more fun. I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos about this last night and the guy was really on point talking about it. And I think we can get so lost. I think it's typical of many type A entrepreneurs where it's like, how can I self-improve relentlessly? How can I scale my business and iterate that and iterate that and iterate that? And you start applying the same thing to yourself. How can I compartmentalize all these different parts of my life and self-improvement becomes an addiction? And before you know it, it's like, man, like I need to just chill and like have, <laughs> like, have more of a laugh with my friends or like right. just, you know, like take the foot totally. off the gas a little bit. So, so that's a big thing I'm trying to do in general, like irrespective of the health issues is just mm. like take a step back and chill sometimes mm. and just enjoy what do you do for fun to I, it sounds super boring like obviously i love seeing my friends hanging out with them they're great um i play guitar and bass used to be in a band now mm. i just kind of do it recreationally um i like creative stuff so i dabble a little bit with like short film making and stuff like that when i have the time um what was the I, band uh, called <laughs> so I look uh, it up and clip it in there. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'll only tell you if you promise not to do that. <laughs> no, I we can't haven't, really, we haven't sure. really got anything out there. Even it was more oh. like we do, we gig locally, and um, yeah, even We've better. Quite quite the fan base in the local pubs. <laughs> so um, on the flip side, Tom. So obviously, there's been some some low moments, a dark side of entrepreneurship. You know, hustling, working hundred hour weeks. What's been especially proud for you? It's been a bunch of stuff. I think um, genuinely when you have a team, you in a weird way feel like a parent at points. And often the proud moments come with our annual Christmas party Mm. where a few of the directors band together and the team are just out there oblivious to you and they're all getting drunk and laughing and they've befriended each other. Mm. And you look out and go, holy shit, we did this from nothing that's normally a little kind of tipsy moment of pride but there's been tons of moments along the way with the team and individually i know in year one um especially when we we were working in the corner of a bigger corporate's office we didn't have our own office space we didn't need it at that point and me and my business partner we were making our first sales and we're in the sales floor where everyone's kind of serious and we're like sprinting up and down it like jumping up and down and high-fiving each other because we're so elated that we just sold like $20 worth of stuff <laughs> so um, yeah that, that kind of stuff was fun um, and we've done all kinds of stuff like we've we've with our suppliers the people where we sell their products we've paid for people's kids to go to college mm. we've saved people's houses from foreclosure like we've had big life changing stuff happen. Yeah. And when we get the emails about that and they say, Holy shit, I just fell off my chair when I received the money and this is gonna change my life or my kid's life, that is my favorite part of the job, hands down. I freaking love that stuff. Yeah. These are the designers where you're featuring their works on the site. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tom, thank you. This has been fantastic. I wanna be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out designcuts.com check out honest designers podcast and his new honest entrepreneurs podcast tom thank you so much thanks jeremy yeah. appreciate it that was really fun yeah thanks for having me on thank you what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other side see nice like a beach if you find the sand and right now i'm feeling like a hundred grand 